Good morning, Internet. I am your host, Amorist, and this is yet another MMO Anthropology video. Today, I interviewed Chris Hare and William Strickland from City of Titans, the upcoming spiritual successor of City of Heroes, now fully funded from their Kickstarter. And that interview is one hell of a treat. As I spoke to them over Skype, and that makes for a terrible background, I'm going to show you scenes from City of Heroes that I've recorded from over the years. But keep this in mind. City of Titans is not going to be a clone of City of Heroes. It will be its own superpowered MMO, tempered and quenched in the culture of players who love comics and superheroes, and alloyed with the lessons learned from superhero MMOs of the modern era. The result, hopefully, will be something extremely familiar to players who now have an empty space in their souls after losing City of Heroes, while still being its own unique self. Without further ado, I bring you to the interview. See you on the other side. Well, everyone, I have a surprise for you today. I have with me two people from the team who are developing the spiritual successor to City of Heroes, City of Titans. I have with me Chris Hare, also known as War Cabot, the project lead of City of Howdy. Titans. And also the lead of composition, which means writing and etc., William Strickland. Hi, how you doing? Well, uh, the first question that I wanted to get out of the way uh, circled around what people did in City of Heroes, since I know that uh, Chris Hare it was a City of Heroes player. I'm curious about, like, what what class did you play and what sort of power set did you gravitate to? Uh, uh, you know, one of my major sayings about City of Heroes is that the end game was alting. You know, you go through, you play again, and you get a different, different experience because you're playing a different class. None of my masterminds ever got very far, but I went all the way through with Scrappers, Brutes, Corruptors, Defenders, um, one tank, <laughs> and um, I believe I eat, did I, no, I, I didn't actually finish with the Dominator, but I did get the Stalker all the way, which was a bit of an interesting uh, decision. Are you hoping that City of Titans could take a similar role in allowing people to um, branch out easily into multiple alts? Uh well, I'm I'm more than hoping. I'm uh, I'm staying it directly. Excellent. Uh, <laughs> what, uh, one of the things that we are absolutely absolutely sure about is that we want people to have different experiences through the game while still having you know shared uh, shared events happen. We are working on something we call the path system, which means that uh, when you choose your character, you choose your powers, you choose what you want to do with the powers. It's a little bit more open than. Um, a class-based game, but it's a little bit less open than a pure free-for-all free for all like champions used to be. And I am going somewhere, so this just takes a little setup. That's fine. Um, the first 20 levels are going to be just about pure, uh, pure, unique to your character. Although, of course, we are encouraging teaming. We are encouraging a lot of things. But the first 20 levels adventures, we're looking at being just about uh, pure to your, to your, uh, to, to your path. And uh, going on from there, it will become less and less so. But uh, the, at the very beginning, it's going to be just a new story every time you decide to roll somebody up. And we're going to have a lot of those because we're not doing voiceovers. And the thing about not having voiceovers is that we can write a lot more story. Because you, 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 I'd like you to visualize Star Wars The Old Republic and how they'd have to add a whole new, if they want to add a whole new storyline, how much work they'd have to do. Very good point. And um, not only that, that means that you're going to be doing a great deal of writing into the game, and I think that's why it's brilliant that we have William along with us, who is uh, the lead of composition, which I, I expect means writing. Yes. And uh, back to the question that I originally asked Warcabit Habit was about what he played in City of Heroes, but from what I, under what I understand, you haven't played City of Heroes. How does that... Uh, connect with your being part of the team that's leading the essentially the spiritual successor to the game? I first got brought into the project because I write a lot of superhero stories. So I'm already 
I'm already in the genre, but from a different angle. You're coming from a good um, place. Yeah. Um, and eventually I kind of worked up because I was, I was a reliable editor in that I had a different perspective. A lot, something we had, especially very early in the project, was that people would, would write up an idea and they would basically say, we need to have this because it was in City of Heroes. Mm -hmm. And it didn't really matter if the idea was good or bad to them. Sometimes the ideas were really good, and sometimes, well, sometimes the ideas were really good. Um, <laughs> but eventually, give me a second. Sure. Um, you have to go beyond. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the we, well, we, part of not, this being a successor... A is, I suspect, also about evolving from City of Heroes. I mean, City of Heroes has become, now that it's shut down even, it's, it's become an older game. And we've had a lot of new games come out with new, interesting ideas on how to compel players to go out into the world and do things, or even interact with each other. And so Absolutely. what I'm really curious about is, what sort of elements did you see as take that you want to take from the way that City of Heroes ran, from an outsider perspective, but, like, and what sort of things would you like to build on top to, to Actually, make it more like modern games? Robin, if you have an example. Take, let me take this real quick, because I do have something to say. Sure. Um, sure. One of the things we did not take, and I'm going to go into this because everyone wants to know a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the things we did not take was we took a lesson from Champions Online, and that was mostly what not to do. Mm-hmm. The two things that people ask, the two, th the one thing that pe everyone asks for is, let me choose all my powers myself. You know, pure pick and choose. Mm -hmm. And we discovered that, combined with the low team size, led to nearly identical tank mage builds, combined with a complete lack of teaming, until people ha ran into absolute trouble and had to call for somebody. The encouragement of a team role, but we are not paying attention to the Holy Trinity. We are, in fact, breaking the Holy Trinity, but then again, city, the original city already did. Mm -hmm. I mean, how often did you uh, see someone go, we can't do a task force without an empathy defender? It's very mm -hmm. true. Yeah. Um, we are encouraging teaming. We are going for the full eight people because that actually works. Yes, people will say, oh, but you steamroll uh, content too fast. Guess what? It's fun. We like fun. That's all that matters. If, if you don't want fun, why are you playing a game? That's know? a very good point. So um, I'm curious as to, especially with you're going with the eight-person team size, as for as before, um, I assume that you're going to be including some sort of uh, a looking-for-group mechanism to pull people together, or is that going to be pretty standard, or are you hoping to add any new bells and whistles to it? That's good. Uh, that's going to involve a lot of, how can I say this, end user testing. Mm -hmm. We know what we want, and we honestly, we've looked at a lot of them, and uh, there were two of them that I personally found superior. One was uh, Warhammer Online, and one was The City. Um, but we, it's one of those things that needs the game functional and a lot and uh, and player testing to happen before we can before we can push the rough edges off and say. Yeah, go ahead. Let's do that. Right. So we, we're not really comfortable about making statements. We know our goals, but uh, we don't know actually what we have to do to accomplish them at this moment because we just need more data. Oh, yeah, that's fine. Well, I'll move on to the next question, which is I'm curious about how you, if you're going to go with a lot of different potential stories, especially uh, if there's no uh, base, like paths, or I mean, like mm -hmm. base roles. How do those intersect with uh, with other players? And will you see a point where your own personal story intertwines with someone else's personal story? And how does that bring characters, to, players together? Uh, or how do you hope it will bring players together? Robin, you want that one? <laughs> I can give it a shot, sure. Um, we do not currently have plans for different player character stories intersecting, although we would love... It's it's one of those things where we would love to do it if it's not impossible. Mm -hmm. And we're going to be looking into... I mean, nothing is truly impossible, but it's how close it gets to impossible that becomes the determining factor. 
Um, actually, actually there, there is something to intersect here. Interject here. Mm -hmm. I remember how I said that your the first twenty levels are going to be pretty much custom to you. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, those are, as as we go up, it's going to be they're not going to peter out. They're not going to go away, but we are going to in, uh, include more common missions. Mm -hmm. Some of which may have a little bit of custom writing to reflect who you are when you go in. And that's where a good amount of the um, player story intersection can come in. Yes, we're going, we're going to have general, general world content, which is stuff that is there for everybody, regardless of what path you're walking on. Um, because otherwise, what's the point of a shared world, you know, if you don't share it? Um, but more than that, Yes. Um, there's also the other factor, which is let's take two of our uh, hello, microphone. let's take two of our paths, okay? Um, one of them is the street hero. You can picture the street hero, right? Tough mm -hmm. guy. Yes. Uh, and the other one is the adventurer who takes the call of science and goes to these strange, unusual places under the earth and out in space. There's a very good example in comics of what happens when you take a street hero. And uh, make him uh, do all of his team leads missions. The ever-loving blue-eyed thing. You got it. And that's what happens. You know how the Yancey Strink gang every every so often comes on and really just annoys everybody until uh, the thing goes and deals with them. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. So we're we're going to have things where, even if you're teamed with somebody else, your 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 personalized people will sometimes show up. Mm, nice. So you know, it, it's it, it's it's a matter of. You know, in the in the old city, you'd have ambushes. We're going for a little bit, you know, something a little bit more interesting than that. Just in, intermittently have your personal story, uh, like you know, uh, protagonists or or antagonists show up when you're in another mission. It 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 really depends on how we write this out, but right. you know, we have some plans in that direction about how we're going to pull this off and that off. Again, a lot of this, and we're 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 not being we're being a little cautious here because we're going to start with the simplest stuff and work out to the really Baroque stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, to toward the end of this, we have something called the lead system, where not only are you going to be able to figure out what you want to do, but you'll be able to figure out what you want to fight and just build your own custom personal story arc all the way to the top mm. from, from what you want to do. And that's, not, and that's different from uh, the City of Heroes style because we're talking about in open world reflects with reflects uh, on what you're doing type thing but we start the path system which by the way can go you can make good you can make choices in the path system right robin yes absolutely you know um, the choices you make matter between good and evil mm -hmm. so if you start off as the paragon protector you can fall you can fall all the way down it's and become a villain wind up oh yes and you can, you can become a villain. Sorry about that. Does that mean that you expect everyone to start out as neutral or choose if they want to start out as a criminal or a hero? You could start out as neutral if you chose, but ye, uh, one of the things I've been fighting for was the option to always start as what you want to be mm -hmm. and then work to defend it or work to change your mind later. You can redeem it. You, you could start off as... I, my perspective on this is you're putting on spandex anyhow... You have to make a call when you go out that first time. Very true. But, I mean, you, you spend enough time sewing, you should probably know what you want to try for by that point. Yes. But uh, if you really feel like being in the, in the middle, you can start that way, and um, you will make eventually make choices. Our alignment system is not pure hero-villain. There's an alignment for brutality, it's you know, whether you say, you know, this guy surrenders, are you going to punch his face in afterwards just for the hell of it? Answer yes, <laughs> um, and yes, we our alignment system is is more in depth and it's more it's a little bit more personal and it's a little bit more objective at the same time because the things our alignment are primarily based on are hard facts. Either you break the law or you don't. Mm -hmm. The law is usually usually fairly clear on stuff like that. Yeah. Um, either you keep your word or you don't. Uh, and you will know if you're lying. And either you, you and the the mo the only one that's even a little bit iffy is whether or not you use unnecessary violence, because some people might disagree on what constitutes unnecessary. Right. But generally, if the guy's surrendered and he's like 
come on, cuff me, man. cuff me, man. I'm I'm ready to go to jail. Then you don't need to punch him anymore. He's been punched. If you're enough. hanging the crook, if you're hanging the crook off the side of the building, and he gives you the information, do you drop him? Right. I can see that as a as a good point for allowing a personal sort of effect into the story, and I assume that affects the the further missions that you'll get, like the sort of people that approach you. Yeah, oh, absolutely. I mean, if sorry, if you get a rep for dropping people off buildings, the cops are kind of gonna be a little yep. upset with you. <laughs> So is city sanitation. How so. uh, how do you see um, you, you, the way that you want to build the aspect of the game that delivers missions, especially in the open world? Um, and I'm thinking, looking at how a lot of games that are coming out uh, in more modern instance have been adding or trying to change the way that quest hubs work, you know, receiving your quest from individuals or walking out into the world and finding dynamic events. Let me, let me get this one. Um, I'm sorry if I'm taking if I'm taking over, but there's there's some parts I want to I want to say because without tying Robin down too hard. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, Go ahead. Number one, of course. You know, again, speaking oh. of Warhammer Online, which was frankly, it had a bu bunch of interesting parts in it, uh, but uh, one of the things it introduced to uh, uh, ma modern MMOs was the public quest, which was a dynamic, uh, evolving situation that people could wander into. And uh, frankly, it, it had a bunch of good effects on the on the game because, among other things, you met people while they were hanging around and doing the mission, and sometimes you wound up in uh, team in leagues or guilds or supergroups with them. The other thing is, though, we are working on having instead of let's put it this way, uh, City of Heroes, you had a contact, you know, uh, you had oh I don't know, give me uh, what oh goodness now I've lost her name. What was her name who uh, kept losing things? I don't recall. Oh. I've met, you know, the the, the Magi Vault. Uh, my brain has shut off again. <laughs> um, I, oh well. I know the but, person you're talking about, but I guess no, I can't remember the name either. So of course. So we we just go skip. Let's say let, let, let's say you had Jimmy Olsen, okay? Mm -hmm. Jimmy Olsen is your contact, and you oh. go to a new zone. Why do you have to stop paying attention to Jimmy Olsen? He's still getting in trouble. <laughs> uh, we're going to have to work on it a little bit so that, you know, for example, when you, tr when you, uh, transfer zone, when you transfer zones, your contact in the police department, uh, Lieutenant James Gordon, uh, gets a promotion and gets transferred to a new location with you. Mm. Or, or gets a promotion and has responsibility for the new area as well. But we are looking at, despite the fact that we're increasing the number of missions, you know, possible and customizing them, we're looking at reducing the total number of contacts in order to make them more full and more developed people. Mm -hmm. You know, so you're, go you're going to be, uh, you're, you're, the, you're our, on our detective path, uh, and you're going to be working with Mr. O with, uh, Mr. Gordon. And remember, one of the things about, the, one of the conceits we're having is that as you level up, time goes by in the world. So when you change your zone, you know, you are further on your career. So J James is going to go from beat cop to lieutenant to maybe plain clothes, to um, to uh, uh, maybe commissioner. Then he might retire, and they may get, uh, get called back to duty by the uh, by the uh, mayor. Brilliant. Well, we his all... daughter Gordon might his, his daughter Barbara might take over at some point. Who knows? Yeah. Go ahead. Well, we we only have a little bit of time left in this interview, so I'd like to say thank you to our two interview subjects, and um, so. Do both of you have something to say to everyone looking forward to City of Titans? Like, uh, you know, what they uh, can expect and why they should be excited about what's coming out? Go for it. It's going to be new, it's going to be different, and I'm, I'm going to bend over backwards to make sure it's as enjoyable as possible to as many different people as possible. That is, that is my rule one. That is basically the only thing I'm really concerned about. I want everyone to have an enjoyable time and to enjoy the depth of the game world that we're crafting for. So, Excellent. And Chris Hare? Well, there's one thing I want to say. You know, despite the fact that I've been, we've been talking about nothing but story, 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 mm -hmm. we are making this as easy as possible for you to do what you want, which means... That if you don't want to read any of this stuff in front of you, all you want to do is get in and punch people till they <laughs> explode with, um, you know, lightning. Mm -hmm. You can do that. 
I mean, you can just click on missions, go through and punch things until they explode, and you will have a heck of a time, and there will be people flying everywhere. We're going to make that happen. That's the easy part. There will be punching and explosions. Excellent. Well, thank you, everyone, for listening, and I'd like to thank um, our interview subject, Chris Hare, the lead project uh, project Project lead lead of City of Titans, and also William Strickland, the lead of composition for their time.